Hello, welcome to Gospel in Action. In the last video series, we have learned about the events in John chapter 4 and at the end, we have seen Jesus' second sign that is to heal the official's son. In this video, let us try to learn about healing overall from the biblical standpoint. The purpose of this video is also to clear all misunderstandings about God healing his people. So whenever we pray for healing for a particular sick person or even for ourselves, we tend to go to Isaiah chapter 53 and verse 5 which says with his wounds we are healed or to Psalm 103 verse 3 which says God who forgives all your iniquities heals all your diseases etc. But the context of these two verses is not for the physical healing of the 21st century believers. So it is incorrect to use these two verses for healing for those who are in the new covenant. Let us understand why in this video. Please note that God does heal people even to this day as we have seen in the last video where Jesus healed the son of a nobleman, an official in the king's administration. God heals his people because he is compassionate. If anyone gets healed just like the nobleman and his family, there is a great chance that they might also believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross, give their lives to him and be saved. But in a believer's case, it is different. A believer is already saved. He does not need a healing or a miracle so that he may be saved again, right? And a believer is the one who denies himself, takes up his cross daily and follows Jesus according to Luke chapter 9 and verse 23. So in a believer's case, God might heal him so that his faith may increase manifold and in turn he may be used more for the work of the kingdom of God. But most of the times God chooses to not heal the believer in order to teach him something or to keep him grounded for him to continue to trust in God for everything. So God can use physical pain and suffering in believers lives to grow their faith. For example, when Paul asked God to heal him, what did God say to him? Paul shares that in his testimony in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verses 9 and 10 like this. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. For the sake of Christ, then I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Isn't it amazing? Don't we all want to be like Paul, that is to be at the level of his faith? When we are at the peak of our faith, frankly speaking, apart from Jesus, we wouldn't need anything else, including healings or miracles of any kind. We have Jesus and Jesus himself is our healing. That is the joy in a believer's life that the Bible talks about. Joy is the assurance that God is with us in everything, including our suffering. Look at what Paul says in Philippians chapter 1 and verse 21. For to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. Don't you think Paul said it in his unexplainable joy? That should be our attitude for ourselves as matured believers. But when we are praying for others who are weak in faith for their physical healing, we should be like Jesus 
showing compassion towards them and believing that even God would show compassion and heal them from whatever sicknesses they are suffering from. As I said, the result from faith is immediate. Prayer brings assurance immediately. But the reward of faith takes time. Sometimes God wouldn't heal a person unless he is glorified. In such cases, we will never know how God is comforting that person. It should be between the person suffering and God. We must never take the authority of Jesus into our hands like all these faith healers do. What they are doing is mass deception to drive you away from God even more. So beware of them. Know that whenever God heals, it will be a full and complete healing. Please go through the list of Jesus' healings and let me know in the comments below which miracle of His is partial. There is none. We must never forget the fact that Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. So always be alert and expect deception from everywhere. Be like the Berean Jews of Acts 17 11 who received the word with all eagerness and they examined the scriptures daily to see if these things were so. So stay awake and do not be deceived under any circumstances. Always be eager to unlearn and relearn the right theology. Also, please do not depend on the experience, but give utmost importance to the word of God. Please do not do things out of emotion, but do it only according to the will of the Lord. To know the will of the Lord, we must first know the word of God in its entirety with correct understanding. Without knowing the will of the Lord, if you say, I rebuke you, Satan, in your anger, do you know what response you will get? The evil spirit will attack you instead. Let us quote the scripture. But the evil spirit answered them, Jesus I know and Paul I recognize, but who are you? And the man in whom was the evil spirit leaped on them, mastered all of them and overpowered them so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. This is according to Acts chapter 19 verses 15 and 16. By saying all this, I'm not undermining your intent or the physical physical experience of the Holy Spirit. No, in fact, physical experience is part of my own testimony. So physical experience is a good thing, but ultimately it should drive us more towards the word of God, which should be our priority no matter what. Our goal must be only to know and do the will of the Lord through the word of the Lord. Victory over everything lies only in doing the will of the Lord. We might face a lot of obstacles on our path in doing His will. Matthew chapter 24 verse 13 says, But the one who endures to the end will be saved. Enduring what? Enduring and overcoming the deception, the persecution, the tribulation and the suffering. So stay put and never take your eyes off. Jesus. Jesus is our everything. Now, let us understand the right theology of healing from the Bible. We have seen that healing in the New Testament through Jesus is only because he was compassionate towards his people. Yes, Jesus died for our entire selves. And we know that he did not die for us partially, but the complete healing of our entire beings will not be received until we reach our heavenly abode. That is when we receive our glorified bodies. So when we pray, we must ask God in the name of Jesus to show mercy and compassion towards our fellow brothers and sisters to relieve them from their pain. Now, going back to the Old Testament, whenever the Bible says that God heals all our 
diseases and with his wounds we are healed like in Psalm 103 verse 3 and Isaiah 53 verse 5 it means that God would heal all the diseases that are inflicted on the people in that case the Israelites who disobeyed and broke the covenant with God those are the diseases inflicted because of their sin they broke the sacred oath that they made to God and sinned greatly against God. So God, as promised, inflicted all the diseases of Egypt upon them. Let us look at the scripture reference for that in Deuteronomy chapter 28. Let us look at verse 15 onwards to get the context. God is warning the Israelites who wholeheartedly agreed to the stipulations of the covenant that is the old covenant. Look at verse 15. But if you will not obey the voice of the Lord your God or be careful to do all his commandments and his statutes that I command you today, then all these curses shall come upon you and overtake you. Now look at verse 21. The Lord will make the pestilence stick to you until he has consumed you of the land that you're entering to take possession of it. The Lord will strike you with wasting disease and with fever, inflammation and fiery heat and with drought and with blight and with mildew. They shall pursue you until you perish. Now look at verse 27. The Lord will strike you with the boils of Egypt and with the tumors and scabs and itch of which you cannot be healed. The Lord will strike you with madness and blindness and confusion of mind. Look at verse 35. The Lord will strike you on the knees and on the legs with grievous boils of which you cannot be healed from the sole of your foot to the crown of your head. Now look at verse 59. The Lord will bring on you and your offspring extraordinary afflictions, afflictions severe and lasting and sicknesses grievous and lasting and he will bring upon you again all the diseases of Egypt of which you were afraid and they shall cling to you. Every sickness also and every every affliction that is not recorded in the book of this law. The Lord will bring upon you until you are destroyed. Did you see that? Those are the curses for those who were under the old covenant and in fact they all faced and suffered from all those diseases because of their sinful actions. We will see a couple of examples in the next video but later the Lord has promised them that they will be healed from all those diseases forever because the Savior will come to take upon himself all those diseases inflicted upon them because of their sin. That is the reason why Isaiah says with his wounds we are healed. So how does this scripture apply to us now that we are not under the old covenant but under the new covenant? It would still apply to us. In fact it is a complete healing from all the diseases that are a direct result of the curses and judgments of God. Yes. So if you are using verses like Psalm 103 verse 3 and Isaiah 53 verse 5 in your prayers for physical healing, then you are assuming that God cursed them and gave them that particular disease because of their sins that they committed in their lives. That is very wrong. It is giving a person false hope. For example, if someone lost their job, instead of praying and giving them hope, that God will provide in some way or the other, your prayer for them is like asking Jesus to give them a bachelor's degree yet again. Does that make sense? When they already had a degree? No, right? Similarly, when someone is sick, remind and give them hope that God is in control of the situation and that he is compassionate instead of quoting Isaiah chapter 53 verse 5 which is completely irrelevant and deceiving. It is already done. We already have healing. 
Jesus healed us from all such diseases caused by sin and the penalty for our sins has already been paid. So let us correct our understanding of physical healing from the Bible. Remember, God speaks to us only through the scriptures. Please ask God about your beliefs on physical healing today. Do we have any diseases today as a result of a curse from God? Pray about it. He will speak with you and show you the truth of the Bible. On that note, let us break this video here and when we come back, we will look into the scriptures more on healing to get a complete and even clearer understanding. Until then, please stay tuned to Gospel in Action and to know more about me, please find the link to my testimony and contact details in the description below. Thank you again for watching.